Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Islands. 
And for the most part, they're 600 pounds and above, which even for sumo is freaking gigantic because most of the guys who fight are about 350 pounds. And so people are kind of cool with this. Like, it's kind of interesting to watch Musashi Maru fight, but it doesn't really threaten the integrity of the sport because these guys are sort of forces of nature. There's no way anyone could possibly anticipate that. The guy who freaks everybody out is this guy. This guy is Kyoko Shuzan. He's an itty bitty little Mongolian guy. He's a little bigger than I am, which is to say he's a little heavier and a little shorter. He is so good at sumo that he acquires this nickname, which is Gino De Pato, which is the department store. Which is to say, he can keep going into the department store for different techniques to whoop your ass. sumo freaks the hell out. They illegalized 20 of the tactics that he's using, and rather than winning the sumo championship, he gets knocked down several notches because no one knows how to deal with him. So it's really tricky when the Mongolians show up on your doorstep. <laughs> People are not comfortable with the Mongol motivation, but we should really talk about why the Mongols are so good at this. And the first answer is Mongolians are fucking awesome. And we just don't know that in the moment. But then once we get beyond that, we should say that there's basically three sports in Mongolia. There's horseback riding, there's archery, and there's wrestling. And Mongolian wrestling makes sumo look like a bunch of punk asses. Because in Mongolian wrestling, you can only win one way, which is throwing the guy to the ground. None of this whole force out bullshit. You're on a giant grassy field, and pretty much you get the guy down or not. And the other thing that's critical about this is that while Japan is a comparatively wealthy country, Mongolia is not. So there are a lot of really hungry up and coming Mongolian wrestlers who desperately want to get to Japan and kick the butts of these guys so that they're making half a million dollars a year. And the guy who really represents <coughs> the collective Mongolian revolution is this guy, Asa Shoryu. And anybody who roots for sumo, this is the best sumo wrestler we will ever see. This guy was the sole grand champion for about eight years. He won all six matches in a year, which is unprecedented, it's completely unheard of, and people frickin' hated him. You could just read the Japanese press, and week after week after week, he's not dignified enough. He doesn't take it seriously. We saw him out drinking. People say he has ties to gambling. I'm shocked, shocked that gambling would have any to do so much. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, completely pounded out of the sport. He got forced to retire after getting into a bar fight that many people believe is staged. And this isn't just about Mongolians. This poor guy, Wakanoho, uh, managed to get thrown out of sumo. He is uh, Osechin. And he managed to get thrown out of sumo for one of the weirdest doping scandals ever, which is to say that he was found with five grams of marijuana. And as you can see from the cartoon, sumo is the only sport in the world where marijuana might, in fact, be a performance enhancement. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, there are not a lot of young people in Japan who want to go into sumo, and that's because it really sucks to be a young sumo trainer. And it particularly sucks when your stable masters beat you up with baseball bats, which was an enormous scandal. So when people start talking about this, they often start talking in the context of Japan facing a need to change and have more immigration. This is what happens with an aging population. Logically, what's come, going to come out of this is robot sumo. But rather than sort of laughing about a country having this cultural confrontation, it's worth pointing out that this is an incredibly, deeply important part of the local culture. And we actually need to find a solution that's culturally sensitive as well as dealing with immigration and sport. Brilliant cultural theorists have looked at this question of how you protect small cultures. And the worry is that when you have a small culture and global culture comes in, either McDonald's swallows it all, you have a violent counter-reaction to it, and you blow it up and say we want none of it, you come up with a curry. You find a way to bring it together, the best of one culture, the best of another culture, or you just sort of say, no thanks, not for me, you wall it off. And the folks who study this, Pippa Norris in this brilliant book, says the wall it off is what happens most often. So what I'm trying to figure out is what happens in sport when you are a big country that people aspire to, that people love, that people want to interact with. You might be Australia and have something like Aussie Rules Football, which is a beautiful and wonderful game, but really has no life outside of Australia and people don't come in to play it. You might have a game completely designed for the 21st century, uh, like mixed martial arts, which loses all cultural context 
but it's just a purely global sport that anyone can participate in. You might have a sport like baseball, which had deep roots in one culture, but really turns into everything depending on where you end up being, whether it's the Dominican Republic, whether it's Japan. My hope for this in some ways is you end up with a sport like football, which has enormously tight geographic roots at the same time as being intensely cosmopolitan, as shown by the Lagos Barcelona Football Club. The hope in the long run, maybe, is that sumo turns into something more like global football. If you're at all excited about this, this is a great time to start watching. Ten days left in the current bash show. Those are the sites that we would want to watch about. Thank you so much. For